you doing here, honey? You're not even old enough to know how bad life gets. Obviously, Doctor. You've never been a 13-year-old girl. A Sofia Coppola film evokes a particular dreamlike style. It's almost like you're watching the haziness of a fantasy or a dream come true. It's a film that's always going to have a lot of pluck, a lot of style, a lot of hyperbolic luxury. And I think that's what really draws me to Sofia Coppola's films. The Virgin Suicides was based on Jeffrey Eugenides' 1993 debut novel. And from the moment that Sofia Coppola read it, she knew she wanted to adapt it. She was heartbroken to learn that a studio had already optioned the book for a film, but she was bold enough to send in her own screenplay, and the producers realized that it was better than the one that they had in hand and gave her the film. With The Virgin Suicides, we see Sofia Coppola working with a theme that would be throughout her filmmaking of lost young women. These are women that are put on pedestals, that are constantly watched, and really have very little freedom. Coppola is looking at how we fetishize young women and then the tragedy that can often ensue from those situations. With The Virgin Suicides, we see Sofia Coppola find her muse, and that's actress Kirsten Dunst. The concept of the muse is a very problematic one in film history, except with a feminist filmmaker like Sofia Coppola, it's quite appropriate. Prior to making her second film, Lost in Translation, Coppola was actually going to make her biopic on Marie Antoinette, but Marie Antoinette ended up being too big of a production to be her sophomoric film, and that's why we have Lost in Translation. But come to 2006, and Coppola, with so much box office success and Academy Award nominations, is ready for one of the biggest biopics of film history. I think she's delightful. She looks like a little piece of cake. It'll be interesting to see how long she lasts. Mm. For her take on the Marie Antoinette story, Sofia Coppola turned to Antonia Frazier's book. And this is a book that really looks at how Marie Antoinette, at 14 years old, was a young girl absolutely ill-equipped for the role that she was given. Sofia Coppola, through Kirsten Dunst's role, really wants to make Marie Antoinette a knowable and empathetic and understandable figure. So much of Marie Antoinette is about commodities. Here we see Sofia Coppola really calculating what kind of luxury she's going to put into this film. The costumes are exquisite. She had the famed patisserie La Durée do all of the pastries in Marie Antoinette, and they are a feast for the eyes. There's a very subtle, quick cut in this film that really unveils what Sofia Coppola is doing with Marie Antoinette. And it's a shot of a lot of shoes on a shopping spree, and very quickly we see a pair of lavender Chuck Taylor Converse. This might be the most anachronistic moment of Marie Antoinette, but it's really a moment that pulls you into the now while you're watching it, and it makes you relate to this young girl who really doesn't have a future and just focuses very much on all the fun things she can put around her. This isn't a film that's necessarily about the 1770s. It's a film that's about the 2000s. So in The Secret, we talk about the law of attraction and how we need to be really careful about who we surround ourselves with because we wind up being the average of those people. So we are going to make vision boards about people who are demonstrating good character, like Angelina Jolie. For 2013's The Bling Ring, Sofia Coppola kind of returns to the Marie Antoinette story when we think about commodities and luxury and young women. The Bling Ring was based on a story that appeared in Vanity Fair by Nancy Jo Sales. It was a story that was called The Suspects Wore Louboutins, and it documented the true crime spree that occurred between 2008 and 2009. This was a crime spree where we saw kids in their late teens and early 20s steal over $3 million of luxury goods from celebrities' homes. Sofia Coppola really wanted a lot of truth and a lot of accuracy in the bling ring. So she convinced actress Paris Hilton, whose home was really robbed, to film there at the scene of the crime. It was important for Coppola to have a mix of recognizable actors such as Emma Watson doing her best Southern California accent, 
I think he looks cute. Yeah. Show me a different top. All right. As well as newcomers, so it felt very fresh. Like these were kids that you could actually meet at school and then find out they had committed these incredible crimes. You're seeing a lot of TMZ reporting, a lot of internet reporting. This is a film that's really looking at how young people get their news and how their obsessions run amok. With the bling ring, you see the same kind of obsession with gossip and celebrity culture as you did in Marie Antoinette. And you see the same kind of obsession with commodifying young girls as you do in The Virgin Suicides. Sofia Coppola knows that she comes from the same place of luxury and privilege as the characters that she focuses on. But we're very lucky that she understands how to critique that. She's a very talented filmmaker that has given us a body of work like no other. And when they went to the queen to tell her her subject had no bread, do you know what she said? Let them eat cake. That's such nonsense. I would never say that. Uh, and here, you're having an orgy with quite a big group. <laughs> I think I'm here sucking your toes. Don't they ever get tired of these ridiculous stories?